Hello everyone, praise the Lord. We give thanks to God that still that we able to participate in this online service. Keep on praying that uh, the cases will go down and also as the schools are starting to reopen, keep on praying and also uh, we keep on praying for, uh, for the church to open to children and adults who are 70 years old. So I hope all of you are doing fine. Now, let us prepare our hearts and our mind so that we can focus and worship God together. So I welcome all of you to our morning worship, morning worship of St. Martin's Church. And also uh, we are on the fourth Sunday after Trinity. The introductory sentence for today's service is taken from James chapter 3 verse 2. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. Now together let us sing the hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Together. Greetings, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let's say the collective of purity together. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Gloria in Exalcis together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, let us say the collect for the fourth Sunday after Trinity together. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we may lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this heavenly Father for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, let's thank God for all His goodness by praising Him. Brother Godwin will lead us with praise and worship. Our first song today is titled, Your Love Never Fails. And your love is such a beautiful and powerful thing. And most especially, when it is an unconditional love. John 3.16 says, For God had such love for the world, that He gave His only Son, so that whoever has faith in Him will not come to destruction, but have eternal life. And that love God has for us, even now, never fails. Let's celebrate God's love. Nothing can separate Even if I run away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have no mercies for me every day Your love never fails You're still the same through the ages Your love never changes It may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning yes. And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me the wind is strong and the water's deep. I'm not alone here in these open seas. Cause your love never fails. is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side Cause your love never fails Hey, 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 hey. You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes And maybe pain in the night Joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Thank you, Jesus. You make all things work together.
together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Together for my good. Hey, 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 you stay the same for the ages. Your love never changes. And every pain in the night, the joy comes in. Because I know that you love me Your love never changes Your love never fails God has been so good to us. Let's praise Him. Thank you, Lord. I come before you today, and there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've given to me. Hey, for all the blessing that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise, with an outstretched hand, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done in my life You took my darkness and gave me your light Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord You took my sin and my shame you took my sickness and healed of my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you. the time for the ministry of the word. Brother Stanley will read, a, will read the passage from James chapter 3 verse 1 to 12. 
James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. Good evening, brethren. Let's read from the book of James chapter 3 from verse 1 to 12. Verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Verse 2. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control our, ourselves in every other way. Verse 3. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. Verse 4. And a small ruder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. Verse 5. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Verse 6. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. Verse 7. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father. And sometimes it causes those who have been made in the image of God. Verse 10. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Verse 12 and the last. Does a fig tree produce olives or a grape vine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. This is the word of the Lord. Of the Lord. Hello again. Now it's time for sermon. Uh, thanks to Brother Godwin for wonderful praise and worship. Thanks for Brother Stanley for reading of the passage. Now let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you for another day that we able to cherish and enjoy, and also the opportunity to hear your word again, Father, as we listen to your word help us to reflect and seek you and to know you more and also father let us know what we need to know may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you O oh lord my rock and my redeemer in jesus name we pray amen okay after a week break so uh, just recap on previous sermon so James was asked, how should one show mercy to the poor? So James explains in uh, chapter 2, by giving generously to meet that their needs. And also James condemns a faith that has no work or deeds. These believers claim to have faith, but they refuse to help a fellow believer who needs food and clothing. James concludes that such faith is dead. Some may object, can't we have faith without works? James emphatically says, no, a workless faith is also demonic and useless. So then uh, James gave us, gave us two examples, both Abraham and Rahab that demonstrated their faith and their righteousness standing before God through their works. As the human body without the spirit is dead, so faith without action is dead. So today we are going to look at James chapter 3 verse 1 to 12. Okay, every day all of us speak thousands of words. We wouldn't be counting but Roughly around there, our words may give encouragement or motivation, and also our words might hurt others. 
most of the time, we will carefully think before we speak. And why do we do that? We don't want to hurt others because the words of the words that we say. When we say unkind things upon others to others, what is really going on in our heart? What does it reveal about what you really desire? So, through this passage, James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12, James highlights on how we Christians should conduct ourselves and reflect through the condition of our tongue. The first, the first condition of our tongue is to have responsibility and accountability, which is verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. So basically, who are these teachers? Why is James particularly highlighting the teachers here? Maybe many are trying to be teachers in the church and they are not holding responsibility and accountability for teaching God's word. So according to James, Teachers must take responsibility seriously because their accountability is greater. Therefore, they shall receive a stricter judgment. Okay, if like for those who are listening to the word of God and they, they doesn't follow, they receive a lesser judgment. They'll be judged lesser. But for those who are teaching God's word, if like for example, for me, if I didn't do what I say, I will be judged two times. So, what is the job like? Uh, what is the job like for a teacher? Like uh, they need to interpret, they need to communicate. They, they also need to apply the teaching of God's word to God's people. This call to teach is a high and weighty calling. Teachers hold higher accountability because through their influence, they are more, they create an opportunity for the teachers to lead people astray. Even in schools, Teachers plays an important role modeling the students. Many of us know teachers because for what they have done to us. Just like that, teachers of God's word have a lasting impact on God's people. Since the teachers of God's word carries higher responsibility and accountability, etc. So we as a church, we must encourage and help the teachers of God's word so that they can be fully equipped to handle God's word rightly. So why, why there is a need for James to talk about accountability and responsibility? In verse 2 it says, For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. Now James moves to speak not just to teachers who are teaching in the church, but to everyone. Even he include himself when he said, we all stumble in many ways. How do we stumble? We stumble because of our cri criticism on other others, gossiping about others, slandering. We have two-facedness, anger towards others, or even through our ins insincere words, 
of each man to gain favor. What when James meant in many ways, meaning he is still concerned about the tongue, the words that we speak. Through our speech, we may stumble in many ways. As for those who doesn't stumble in what the person says, they are perfect. When we look at Proverbs chapter 18 verse 7, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The most difficult activity is hard to control our tongue, because our mouth may cause destruction. That's why James talks about accountability and responsibility. It is important to be mature spiritually so that we can control our tongue and be able to walk better with God. And through that, it's less impossible to stumble. James added for those who are able to control their tongue, that they will able to bridle their whole body. Tongue plays an important role even when we visit the doctor. The first thing the doctor will check is our tongue because our tongue says a lot of our health. Our tongue will give clues to what's going on with our overall health. When we understand the weight of our accountability and responsibility of our tongue, we able to bridle our whole body. You see, because we speak from our heart, we doesn't have control, we hurt others. But when we have the control in ourselves, we able to bridle our whole body. Be able to control our whole body. So the second condition of tongue, it controls like beat, rudeness, and spark that we can see from verse 3 to verse 6. Then James gives us three types of illustration. The first illustration is in verse 3. If we put beats into the mouths of horse so that they obey us, we guide their whole body as well. A bead is the part of the uh, bridle, bridle that is inserted into horse's mouth. It enables the rider to cue to a horse by placing pressure in and around the horse's mouth. This pressure is used to control the horse's speed and the direction of movement. Such a small bit in the horse mouth controls the strong whole horse and also the small thing helps to guide the horse and their whole and their whole body. Without the bit in the horse mouth, the horse cannot be controlled. The first illustration is the small bit that controls the big horse. The second illustration is in verse 4. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. A rudder is a primary control surface used to steer a ship boat, submarine, overcraft, or other vehicle that moves in air and water. The rudder is incomparably smaller to the size of the hull that is to be turned by it. Without the rudder at the ship, the ship cannot be controlled. Based on these two illustrations, a small bead in the mouth of horse controls a strong horse. A small rudder turns a large ship. Just like that, 
when we have control over our tongue, we have control over ourselves. That's what James was telling in verse 2. We able to bridle our whole body. So the third illustration is in verse 5. So also the tongue is a small member. Yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by, small, by such a small fire. The illustration used by James about beat and ruder shows small things controls big objects. In verse 5, James uses the illustration of small fire that destroys a great forest. Fire is something essential in our daily life and is important for our survival. It gave us the ability to cook food, forge metal tools, uh, form pottery, harden bricks, drive power plants. Fire could be destructive too. So when we look at verse 6, it further elaborates the nature of the tongue is similar to fire. As written in verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, sitting on fire, the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. When a forest caught fire, the fire will damage a wide area quickly just like our tongue. When we saw the bushfire in Australia, a lot of people lost their lives and also their homes. And also we saw a lot of animals die and, and the animals also lost their habitats. Wildfires could be very huge but this huge fire is caused by a small fire or small spark a spark that can or be thrown from the secret buds in 1997 a carelessly tossed cigarette caused forest fire that burned 800 acres in Berkeley and Manchester Township is one of the part in New Jersey just like the fire our tongue also could bring such destruction to others it could ruin one's reputation it can destroy the unity in our church it can destroy the fellowship that we have among our family members it also can destroy our friendship the image that james uses in verse 6 quite clear our tongue is like a fire our tongue is a world of unrighteousness and also even though our tongue is not separated from our body. Our tongue is part of our member in our body. Yet, because of our tongue, it can stain our whole body. It will defile us. So, and also our tongue is just like setting on the fire the entire course of life. When we see what, after what happens after the fire, everything is burned. There is nothing left. Our tongue likewise can either can be controlled like the rudder and beat or our tongue can destroy just like the fire. Think about what others say to us what we say to others that can last a long time 
for good or evil. Reflect on those words we used to encourage others and the words that we used that might have destroyed others or vice versa. In order to avoid problems, we might think that silence is the best way. But when we saw this, even though James list out the damages that tongue can bring, he didn't ask us to never to speak or to wake to take the vow to be silenced. It's true because in order if you can't control the horse, you cannot go and tie up at the barn. If you can't control the sheep, you cannot just leave the sheep uh, docked. This is important. Is that we use, we need to use our tongue. Therefore, based on these three illustrations, the bait, the rudder, and the fire can all do tremendous good when they are controlled properly. Yeah? Even though they are small, but if you can control them, as long as we can control them, it is good. Then we look to another point. The condition of tongue is untamable, which is can be found in verse 7 and verse 8. As written in verse 7, for every kind of beast and bird of reptile, sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. In the beginning of creation, God gave man to have authority over all of his creation. So, and when we look at this verse, James is telling the readers that every kind of beast and bird of reptile sea creature can be tamed. In our life, we could have witnessed or heard People taming the wild animals to be their pets. We might see in zoo, circus. James is telling us that wild animals can be more easily tamed than what a man cannot tame. If a man can tame a wild animal, then what else a man cannot tame? So verse 8 says, But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Verse 7 says, All the animals of every kind can be tamed by man. But verse 8 says, No human can tame the tongue. Comparison of both verses shows our tongue is more deadly than the wild animals. Our tongue is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Maybe more poisonous than venomous snake. Our, tame, our untamable tongue is more dangerous. It's more poisonous than the animals that are out there that we assume very dangerous, that we assume very, uh, we scared that these animals have, uh, is poisonous, but we have the most deadly, most poisonous thing here, the tongue. But if we control our tongue, as written in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. But the tongue of wise brings healing. It's true that our tongue can be poisonous, our tongue can be deadly, and also our tongue can destroy others. But we, but when we control our tongue, we can bring healing to others. James is saying, Human cannot tongue cannot tame their tongue, 
But we must know that only God will able to help us to tame our tongue. James didn't state here because he wants us to understand the clearer picture on what we are dealing with. With the help of Holy Spirit and also having the fruit of the Spirit in ourselves, we are able to walk daily in the Spirit and having obedience of Christ. This really shows that we how dearly we need our God to control our tongue. We saw how our tongue can be, uh, can destroy others. We saw how our tongue can be a deadly poison. Our see our tongue is worse than it's more scarier than wild animals. The another condition of our tongue is inconsistency and contrary to nature. This can be found is verse 9 to 12. Verse 9 says, With it we bless our Lord and Father, with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. James is reminding the readers that all of us are made in the image of God. It's not that I made from the image of God, someone else made from different image. No, all of us are made in the image of God. We may come from different background or culture, or different race, but we all are made in the same image of God. Maybe the teachers in the church of the uh, teachers of the law or teachers in the church during the time of James, they could be cursing or belittling those who are different from them. We saw they were not giving uh, proper uh, attention. They're not giving, uh, helping those who are in need. So, while cursing them, I mean these people, uh, these teachers of the law, cursing them, they also could be blessing and praising God. Outside the church, they're scolding people. They say, don't do this. Yeah, you're wrong. But when they come go into the church, they say, praise the Lord, bless the Lord. They sing amazing, uh, all the songs praising God. So, Sometimes this would, this could have happened to us. We could be praising God in the church and after after church we will be scolding or cursing the drivers on the road or gossiping after the church, after the church is over. So James is reminding us in verse 10 saying from the same mouth come blessings and cursing. My brothers these things ought not to be so. So James is telling we shouldn't be praising God and scolding God's people with the same mouth. So we might ask God, God, why you gave us only one mouth? You know, it would be better for us if you given us two mouths. One is to uh, bless you, praise you. One is to curse your people. But unfortunately and thankfully, God gave only one mouth to all of us. That's why we need to rely, rely on God and practice self-control. It is not an easy task and also it is not impossible. It is possible with God. James in verse 11 and 12 illustrates our inconsistency in contrary, our inconsistency is is contrary to nature. Verse 11 says, Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? No, it doesn't. James is pointing out that he, that what often happens among Christians is contrary to all of nature. The fresh water, spring pour forth fresh water. And the salt water, spring pour forth salt water. James in verse 12 says, Can fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or grapevine produce figs? Neither can, neither, a, neither can a salt yield fresh water.
So, even in verse 12, it's a similar illustration with verse 11. The fig tree only able to produce fig and the grapevine able to produce grape. The fruit is based on the tree, based on the fig, based on the fruit. Just like that, the word that comes out from our mouth based on the condition of our heart. For example, uh, uh, the, the fig tree is surrounded with olive tree. The fig tree cannot bear the, cannot bear olives. If the fig tree surrounds the grapevine, the grapevine will not produce figs. So, it is what James is trying to say here is, so what comes forth is true indication of what is inside. We say such words to others, that's, our, that's what our heart made of. Let's look at Mark chapter 7 verse 20 to 23. Uh, let's just op, uh, read to you. Mark chapter 7 verse 20 to 23. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within of our heart of man come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. That's why James trying to tell to his readers. Jesus points to the true source of moral defilement is our human heart. It is the center of our being and from it comes thoughts, emotions and action that pollutes us. Then Jesus gives a list of sins that flow from the heart. Our unclean hearts defile our thoughts, our speech, our deeds. We desperately need the cleansing and the renewal of our heart, which is what God gives us in Christ, which is written in Titus chapter 3 verse 5. He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy by washing of regeneration and renewal of Holy Spirit. The cleansing and the renewal only will be given by God. So we need to ask for it. Today, we have seen the condition of our tongue that can bring destruction to others. We might think that our tongue cannot do much destruction to others. You might assume, you might think, hey, no, my tongue will not bring destruction, will not destroy others. But we are wrong. Our tongue able to control our whole body and also able to destroy, just like the illustration that James told us, like a small fire that burns the whole forest. The word we spoke comes from our heart. Therefore, we must keep our heart clean and humble. This passage is a timely reminder for all of us. Our words are important and it's not only the message we seek to communicate, but how our message is received and how others understand what we meant. Don't worry. We have the word of God with us. We also been poured with Holy Spirit. Therefore, we always, always need to seek God's help in controlling our tongue. We can say the prayer that David prayed is written in Psalm 19 verse 14. That's the words that I always say before I give sermon. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we need to know it's important for us to understand the condition of our tongue. Don't let our tongue destroy others. A small gossip, a, a small story, or small, small any any rumors, it can destroy people. Just like that, it will go, that rumors or gossip will become a wildfire. So, with help of God, let's control our tongue so that through this tongue we are able to control our whole body let's pray heavenly father thank you lord thank you for your word lord help us help us a lot lord we don't want our tongue to be to to bring destruction or destroy others and also we don't want our tongue to destroy ourselves Father, today we saw the importance of our tongue. Father, that we should always use our tongue to bless you, to praise you, not to use the same tongue of praising and blessing you to curse you, Father, to curse others, Father. Father, help us, guide us, Father, for us with your Holy Spirit. Father, Help us to see, to look, to reflect on the condition of our hearts. That the, the, the condition of the heart that brings the word in our mouth. Lord, help us a lot. Help us to reflect, Lord. Talk to us, Father. Guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's say the Knights and Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures and he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the, son, the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now is the time for intercession. Brother Joseph will lead us with prayer. Intercessory prayers. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for bringing us together once again to intercede on our behalf the church and the nations of the world bring the church throughout the world onto your care especially in Comoros we pray that there will be a greater freedom of religion so that the Christians in Comoros would be able to freely share the gospel without fear we pray that the Christians would continue to stand firm in their faith and not be easily swayed by the teachings of the occult and other religions we pray that god will continue to build and strengthen his church in a country where christians are constantly persecuted and oppressed we 
pray for the province of Southeast Asia. We pray for our Archbishop Mata J. Tires. We pray that he will continue to faithfully preach the gospel and pastor God's flock. We pray for the following specific churches in our province, in the Diocese of West Malaysia. We pray for our Bishop Ning Moon Hing. We pray that God will continue to give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love. We pray for the Church of the Resurrection, Kuala Kangsa. Venerable John Kennedy Samuel and Evangelist Andrew Doris Singham. We pray that God will continue to be with them and give them understanding on how to lead his flock. We pray for other parts of the provinces, province, especially St. Margaret's Church. Kinagao Anglican Church of Saba. Pray for Reverend Canon Jeffrey Kong and Evangelist Rosalie Taranak. We pray that God will, may give them a spirit of wisdom and discernment. We pray that they will preach and proclaim God's word faithfully and boldly. We pray that they will continually stand firm in their calling, in their eyes and of their heart be enlightened and may they know the hope to which God has called them. We bring unto your care, Lord, the nations of the world. We pray that uh, currently many nations have been hit by COVID-19. We pray that God will give the peace of Christ to rule and reign in our hearts. So that we may be a witness to those who are without hope. We pray for God's mercy and healing upon those who are afflicted by, with the illness. Especially, we pray for England because they are the, one of the mo world's worst COVID-19 rates, death rates. We pray for the victims and their families affected by recent Get a mind landslide in Myanmar and pray that Almighty will be able to find the authorities will be able to find the missing people. We we'll bring Malaysia onto your care. Lord, Malaysia is expected to hit to be hit with the second wave of economic bad news. We we'll pray that all small business owners are able to withstand the economic downfall during this COVID-19 period. We pray that, pray for more Malaysians, we pray that more Malaysians will come forward to help the downtrodden people. We also pray for the ministers to hold responsibility and accountability in their works. We thank God for the hard work of the frontliners in Malaysia. Lord, we bring St. Martin's community unto your care. We pray for the, our Bishop Andrew Fang and his family and Pastor Sakte. We pray that they would faithfully walk to glorify God together in response to his grace by making disciples of Jesus Christ. We bring the church congregation unto your care. We pray for Brother Nathan and family. Also for those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. We pray for the expectant mothers, especially Cindy and Mia Hao. We thank God for his good and beautiful works. We pray that God will continue to give them peace throughout their pregnancy by surrendering every worry or fear to God. We bring the sick unto your care. Lord, we ask that those who are sick and need healing, especially we pray for James Jerry um regina born heart hong hu ming Myung, melissa marianne shuang q fiong nancy pauline peggy and dolly pray that god will have compassion on them and bring healing from all sicknesses we pray that god will give 
their doctor's wisdom to provide right treatment and medication. We pray that God will give them strength and nourishment. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now it's time for the confession. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, Firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Let us say together the general confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fall. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Absolution. Almighty God, who forgave all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in the life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From today's passage, we saw that uh, from James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12, our tongue can be very destructive, able to destroy relationship, breaks the unity in the church, harmony, breaks our relationship with others. So, but if if you control is a good thing but if you didn't control we can see what are the consequences let us reflect on the incidents that that we that happened to us that we said something wrongly that's something that's troubling you so let, let's take this time to forgive the person and also to forgive ourselves if we are hating anyone. We take this time to really accept the peace that is given to us. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled, to, to, uh, reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in His name and share His peace. As we share the peace with others, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Now it's the time for Lord's Prayer. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen.
blessing. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Thanks for all that who join for our service today. I hope when the Lord spoke to you throughout the service, Maybe from the liturgy, or maybe it's from the praise and worship, maybe from the passage that being preached, or even during prayer. Sometimes God do speak to us in various ways. That we have, when we look at today's passage, it's a reminder for all of us including me, that we need to be careful on what we speak because our word, our mouth is more deadlier and poisonous than the wild animals that are out there. We are always scared that wild animals will kill us or might poison us but we never thought the tongue, the part of our body, could be deadlier than that. And today's James highlighted that no man can tame out the tongue, but only God, only true God, be able to do so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day that we that you have given to us. Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Father, without you, we wouldn't be here. Father, we want to thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us. Father, thank you for through, the, through your word. You are able to teach us, able to make us understand. On our journey to be Christians. Father, we want to thank you that every day that you are talking to us, every day that you are journeying with us, Father, we want to thank you for your presence in our life. Father, thank you for keep on working in us, keep on correcting us. Father, help us as we mature in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So good day on all of you. God bless you and take care.